Hello YouTube, hope you're doing well. My name is Max Christensen from Observant Sound and today I wanted to do something which I've been meaning to do for a very long time but been kind of scared of doing, which is uh, to just make a, a, a synth patch from scratch and to show you every single step of the, of the process. So what I wanna do with you today is an ambient patch. And I have no idea what's going to happen. This is totally new for me, uh, but we'll just see how it goes. Before we get started, just so you don't have to skip to the end of the video to make sure this is even worth watching, here's a short snippet of the, of the sound we're going to make. So let's get right into it. The first thing I would always do when making ambient is to get rid of our sharp attacks and decays because like, I think most ambient music should be slow and evolving. So I'm, I don't really want any harsh attacks and decays. So yeah, sure, a bit longer maybe. That's a good start. Um, then I want to get rid of some of those harsh harmonics. Sure, good enough for now. And um, next I'd like some more movement. And I think I'll try to get that through scrubbing through some wavetable positions of our first oscillator. And now what I like to do in those kinds of situations where it's like, it's early start, um, not sure where it's gonna go yet. And we have all these wavetable positions that all have unique sounds, but instead of going through one after a time, as I'm sure many of you have done, you kind of get used to what to expect at certain points. Um, and I think that takes away a lot of, you know, it, it, it makes it less easy to get surprised in a way, um, because all of these wavetables have really interesting things happening with them. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna randomize and I do love this feature, uh, our wavetable position of our oscillator. So I'll choose type select in our randomize um, window menu under global and hit random under oscillators. And you can see our wavetable positions and also the, I'm not even sure what you call this, but you know that <laughs> it also changes every time we hit random. So let's maybe just go through this until we find something we like. Yeah, sure, why not? This could. This feels more like um, this could be a rhythmic element to our sound. So I'll just turn this down a little bit. And you know, maybe we can also uh, have this be in time with our music. Okay. Maybe. Getting a bit of a smoother transition there so it doesn't like if the interesting bit is happening somewhere around here, then we don't really need to modulate it all the way because then you get like, you hear how it does this quick whoop, 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 whoop. I kind of want something more smooth. So I want it to, uh, to stay longer on those, on those peaks at the interesting points. Yeah. Maybe even make this slower. Okay, it's a good start. Uh, something you can also always do in ambient music is just add a whole lot of reverb and delay. Actually, let me check the routing. Is um, it's FX where the FX? Oh, they're here. Um, okay, yeah, so it is serial, right? Yeah, if it if it is serial, I'm actually not 
not quite sure on this. But if it is serial, I would want my delays coming first and then going into the reverb. That seems fine for now. Well, actually... Yeah, that seems good. You know, yeah, actually, let's put an LFO on this, so we'll kind of get varying delays. Sometimes they're more bright, sometimes a bit more soft. But this one I don't want to be in time. This one should be more freely moving. You know, th this might be a subtle effect. This is not something we immediately hear as a very certain change like this, but it doesn't really matter. Any kind of movement you can bring into an ambient patch will help its long, you know, its, its sustain power, let's just call it that, because it's never quite the same. This already sounds quite nice. I'm not going to modulate this for now. I mean, you can always go crazy and modulate everything, single parameter. Um, but it's also easy to get lost. So let's maybe just leave it at that for now. Now I think I'd like to add a second sound. And I'm going to have this one move into our second filter. Let's turn it on. Let's turn the mix to both. Let's have it in parallel. I don't want it serial because I want, for now, I want more mixing control. So I have one sound here and one sound here. And it can be a combination of both. Like we could say this one goes to exclusively into filter one. This goes exclu exclusively into filter two. Um, but this could be like a mix of both. So it would go 50-50 into filter one and filter two. Uh, but let's just have it one and two for now. It's Right now, I just want to hear this one. Oh, I forgot to turn down the delay. <laughs> okay. I do like this sweep. Let's see what... Yeah, I like this the most. Um, it's still a bit harsh. It won't mix very well right now. If we want to keep it like that, it would have to be very low in volume because, like, you can hear it, it almost immediately overpowers the second, uh, the first filter just because it has so much more um, high frequency material. But uh, yeah, let's choose. Um, I just want to hear this one now. Let's choose uh, some kind of filter. Maybe not a low, but what could we use? Maybe this one? Actually, do have an idea. I want, I want some rhythmic movement on this. Uh, do I want to restart? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, right. I want some rhythmic movement, but not sixteenths. So let's make it maybe 
Yeah, but not that much. No, actually slower. sure why it's modulating the pitch. It's probably has to do something with this mode. Nope. Oh, okay, it's just the resonance was way too high. Oh, this might actually work better. This this seems like it, like it sounds more hollow than this one. This one has a warm low end and kind of like maybe a slight emphasis on I, what am I saying? I mean, it's it's a filter type. It has something to do with the resonance mode. Uh, just the sound to me right now is that this has a more warm low end and this one is a bit more hollow so I do I think there's some high pass or maybe shelving going on here as well uh, but this is better for my needs because we already have a very warm tone in our filter one and so now we've gotten rid of some of the harshness, but we still have some interesting mid-tones, so this will probably mix better. Something like that, maybe. And now what I'd like to do for this intensity slider for our second oscillator is to bring in a little bit of chaos, a little bit of wild movement. And so if you look here, um, we have these four wavetables, which are often most commonly used, but we have a lot more to choose from. Actually, a bunch of very interesting shapes that all have their unique sound and that we can use for uh, different cases. So um, but I want to have a look at... Uh, yeah, I want to have a look at these bending modes and see which one I like. Um, that seems a bit too predictable. That could be fun. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's it's something. We're getting there. Um, now, to make it even more unpredictable, what we can do is, um, instead of having this be on all the time in whatever tempo this is, I think it could be fun to influence the speed of this one with a different LFO. And let's maybe take, take this one, which we're already using.
And you know, at this point, that's a bunch of stuff I could try. A bunch of ideas, but pretty much you can just experiment. Take any LFO envelopes if, if you want a more predict well, I say predictable. These can get really weird too. It's just um I've never really spent that much time with these, but you can do a bunch of things with them. Just not super sure how to use it. I should spend more some oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, you have stuff like that, which could be interesting for a you know, an interesting release for something that happens after you let go, but whatever, I'll sticking I'm sticking with the LFOs for now. Okay, that's cool too, but still a little bit predictable for my taste, so... Um, let's see what happens if we... If we blend these two, maybe... Maybe I'll take something... Something like this. And again, we can, there's a button for us to modulate, so let's just modulate it with, um, what should we choose? I don't know, we can pretty much choose anything at this point. It's a little bit fast. But this one I don't want to modulate all the time. So now we can use the sidechain feature. And what that does is I can take... Um, let's take this one. So I can sidechain the amount that's being applied by LFO 8 with LFO 7. So when LFO7 is, is high, then this will apply 100% of its modulation. When it's low, it will apply none. And you can turn this around. But I want it to be... Well, it doesn't really matter. sounding pretty nice. What else can we do? We can add a third. And um, yeah, I don't think there's a feature for me to just change the type of just one oscillator. Uh, if there is, please let me know. I haven't really found it, but you know, it could be useful, but I mean, it's not a big deal. Let's just choose any. Maybe half this an octave above, so it's it it stands out from from these two and makes the chord a bit bigger, because essentially it means every note you play becomes an octave. Um. Okay, I do like these sounds. Now I'm just kind of at the a little bit of a dilemma because I would 
actually love to give this one its own filter. That doesn't seem to be possible right now. So what can I do? I mean, they do sound quite similar. What about this one? Uh, like this. What if I give you a band pass instead? Yeah, it's it. That's nice too, but it's. I think that's a different sound. What if I put you both in the same? Yeah, that works. Okay, so we'll have one and two going into filter one, and three going into filter two. And we'll have a mix of both, and it's still parallel. So now I just want to hear the second. Whoops. Can I? Yes, I can. Ah, great. Okay. So, uh, just a second. Okay, uh, now what I can do is we have this nice top end. It's a bit, still a bit harsh. Uh, like I wouldn't mix these two yet, but if you look here, uh, we have this is our routing matrix, and it's really useful for exactly situations like these where we need to know what goes where and when. Um, we have two inserts, and I want to use this insert that comes after filter two exclusively. And I want to use this to uh, take off some of the of the high end. So I need to use the low pass. Trying out different octaves now to see how they sound. Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah, so that octave is barely audible. So what we could do is just lower this another tad and then use our key tracking macro and raise it a bit. This will mean that the higher we play on the keyboard, the then this will this control will follow. So like the <clears throat> the max point of this would be our highest note and the lowest point would be our lowest note. And you can change that curve here as well, but I don't really need to right now. Yeah, so we kind of get a bit more consistent sound that doesn't change dramatically depending on where you play on the keyboard, which could be nice. 
I mean, it's again, it's what you need to do. It's it's your sound, your your patch. It's just one way of doing it. So um, okay, let's combine those two again. Yeah, okay, I think that sounds a bit better than having it the, being the octave up, because like in the lower octaves, whoops, there we go. You can hear the low end from these two really rumble around, while this one seems kind of clear. So um, yeah, I do want to keep them closer together after all. And now it sounds a bit more consistent. It's still still a bit of mud. Um, so could we? What else could we do with these inserts? Maybe it's what does this sound like? Not today. That could be fun. Maybe that's... What would it sound like with our chaotic uh, LFO? bit hectic. Sure, yeah, I, I guess this works. Um, you don't have to love this idea. It's just something that can work. Having a sample and hold or something like a frequency shifter and just have it be way at the top end and then play around with the dry wet, especially when you have a lot of delay and reverb. You can just add a little spark, um, sparkle to the sound. Because it's so high, it's not really a note that you perceive as a note. It's just high frequency content. So, hmm, what else can we do? What else does this need? Actually, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this away. It's a good it's a nice idea, but not for, for what I'm going for right now. What else could we use? Okay, maybe we don't use anything. We don't have to use all the controls. We can, but we don't need to. Whoa, that sounds intense. Oh, why is it an amp? That shouldn't be that. There we go, that's what I was expecting. Oh, 
wow, that sounds really nice. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stack a few LFOs on top of each other. Because we, like, we have three slots for most. Um, yeah, so why not just, why not just do that? happen if we do this nah not my thing uh, what, what this is doing is um, I'm using the same LFO for both controls but one moves in one direction and one moves in the other direction so while this is going this way uh, this is theoretically going um, this way, which is above 100%, so it just stays there. Um, so you would have a crossfade between those two, but I'm, I don't quite like that sound, so I'm going to undo that. <clears throat> This is also a very nice trick, um, having the amplitude of one LFO be affected by another LFO. So at at the speed, like this can go really deep. Say we take LF, uh, we take LFO five to modulate the amount of LFO seven, and eight is already being manipulated by five and by six. So if this would go on and off, then in turn, like, uh, and now, now I'm losing track. Oh, I wanted this one. Yeah. So let's, let's do it one at a time. Um, sorry, I'm kind of losing <laughs> the red thought. No, the red thread, as we say in Germany, uh, yeah, I wanted to... Yes, okay. I want to modulate the amplitude of this one. So I'll take, oops, I'll take LFO6 and uh, be quite generous with, with this. Um, I can be generous with this compared to something like like what we had here earlier, because small movements of this would have big effects on the sound. And all this is doing is applying or not applying modulation. It doesn't make anything go crazy or crazy fast or jump into super high frequency content. So I, we can crank this up quite high. 
Okay, so now this the amplitude, the how much this is working is being affected by LFO6. So that means every time that this is at a negative value, then all of all of these with uh anywhere where I use LFO7, it's not going to do as much. So maybe let's have in in turn Yep, there we go. Let's have LFO7 influence the speed of this LFO a little bit. So now they're cross-modulating each other as well. And we still have more modulation spots to, to use. Don't want to restart. I'm gonna keep this though. I'm gonna keep this in, oops, like not non affected. So we have. It used to be a rhythmic element, now it's <laughs> kind of being lost in the, in the wash, which isn't a bad thing. It's it's fine. It's pretty much whatever the, the patch wants to become, in a way. I, it, it just tried to let it happen. I find that gives me the best results instead of me trying to, to in a way, force my will onto, onto this patch. Uh, so yeah, let's roll with this. This one is a little bit intrusive. So I'm gonna modulate its volume as well. Which one should we take? I don't even know. At this point it doesn't really matter, I think. Whoop, no. Was that one I wanted to... Yes. Okay. Not quite that much. Maybe something like... Like this. Oh, and yeah, maybe it's also a good idea to note it, uh, to pay attention to, which I didn't do, right? <laughs> uh, but if you use a lot of modulators, it can be nice to have them go in different directions. So let's say um, all of the places where I use the sixth envelope if they all were going to to the right as the positive value rises then they would all share the same movement but if one, one light goes to the negative and one goes to positive and visa visa versa then there's just a bit, a bit more variation so let's maybe just turn this one around just cause just because
Okay. Um, what else can we do? What else can we do? Oh, you know what we can do? Is, um, spread our voicings a bit. Just for fun, I want to see what this sounds like. This feedback control can do pretty magic things sometimes, but I never know what to expect. So I want to, I want to macro on this, just so I can have a little control over my, uh you know, ambient patch, and maybe while I'm at it. Wait, no, I wanted this. master filter I think we're like we're almost done the only thing left that I could think of doing is um is applying some EQ maybe finding some some trouble spots or any very dominant frequencies that we can maybe tame a little bit Again, that seems like a good candidate for Oh, you can't do bi-directional. Hmm. Oh well. It's my EQ boost. And... And my EQ mod. No mod. Mod. Okay, EQ mod. And hmm. That's up to taste, I guess, if you want something, if you want a predictable curve on this, or if you'd like something more chaotic, it's up to you.
Yeah, I, th I think we can call this done. I I don't know what else I would do on this path. Actually, I wouldn't do anything. Like I'm at the point now where I'm adding macros, so I'm not changing that that much at the sound anymore. So yeah, I would call this done. If you want to have a go at this patch, if you want to check it out, if you want to mess with it, if you want to make it your own and maybe just just play with it a little bit, you can download it for free and I will add a link in the description below. So I I hope this was, you know, useful to you. I hope you maybe learned a little bit from it. And uh, it turned out to be quite a long video, but you know, I this was fun for me. So like, let me know your thoughts and uh, please leave a like and a subscription and hit that bell and all that jazz. It really helps out. And uh, if, you know, if this is well received, if, if you want to see more stuff like this, like me breaking down a synth designing process, then I will definitely do more. So let me know in the comments. That's all for me. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.